Because I'm kind of like Johnny Cash, you know, he always said, hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Well, I say, you know what, I'm Bill Carter and I'm from Rector, Arkansas. Bill Carter has been a lot of things. Serviceman, secret service agent, rock and roll attorney. I can do about anything. I've had so many different jobs. I've, actually, I've been an undertaker. But he says he owes it all to his humble beginnings in Arkansas. We had no money and uh, I went to high school there and have fond memories of that community because uh, so many people helped me when I gave me assistance that my parents couldn't. But after that, Bill was on his own. When you finished high school, you had to go get a job because they couldn't, the family couldn't continue to support you, or shouldn't. So at 17, I joined the Air Force. After serving his country for four years, Bill returned to Arkansas with some money in his pocket and decided to go to school. He enrolled in Arkansas State University and earned a degree in economics. But in 1962, life threw him a curveball. He found himself in the Secret Service, working as a special agent during the Kennedy administration. I was so impressed. Like everyone else my age in, in the United States, uh, we were excited about having a young president. Eisenhower was the grandfather. Bill wasn't on the White House detail, but he served on many assignments with the president. But his death is still a moment he'll never forget. Devastating. Uh, his death was actually just emotional uh, trauma and I, I never really got over that. He would go on to work with President Johnson before eventually resigning in 1966. After he left Washington, Bill turned his attention to law. He went to the University of Arkansas Law School and set up his practice in Little Rock. Then came another curveball and Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx. He came to me to send me to Washington to get the approval for him to operate cargo airline. And not long after that, economist Elliot Janeway called him for help. He uh, had a client named Mick Jagger who had been barred from coming back to the United States. The Rolling Stones turned to attorney after attorney to help solve their immigration issue. No one could get the job done. That is, until they found Bill. But it almost didn't happen. Well, I just got up and said, this meeting's over. And I started to leave and Jagger jumped up out of his chair, grabbed me by my coat Set, set back down and he told the lawyers, I'm gonna hire Bill Carter. We're gonna give him a chance, see if he can do it. He convinced Mick Jagger, but he still had to win over Keith Richards and the only place to do that was in a bar. Mick had told me one key factor. You meet with Keith, you better be prepared to drink with him because if you don't drink with him, he won't trust you. And I said, that's no problem for me. Keith came in, he bolted through a door in the back of the room had a, his usual scarf flowing around his neck and a bottle of Jack Daniels in his hand. He came in and set the whiskey down and said, all right, let's have a drink. And that's all it took. Two years later, and the Stones were touring America. Richards and Ronnie Wood even made an unplanned stop in Arkansas. And after a while, his client base started to grow. While I'm with the Stones, uh, I got involved with David Boyd. But Bill wasn't just a rock and roll lawyer. He represented country stars like Tanya Tucker, Reba McIntyre, Waylon Jennings, and Lone Star. And we can't forget about his work on the Gaither Gospel Hour. Then in 2011, he found himself honoring a man that he looked up to growing up. Johnny had grown up in Dias, Arkansas, which is about 35 miles from my hometown. And we grew up in similar circumstances. And and I knew him, but it, and, and knew his family. Arkansas State asked him to help create the Johnny Cash Music Festival and raise funds to restore the country music legend's boyhood home in Dias, Arkansas. He has said many times he is so proud that he grew up so poor in Dias, Arkansas. It was a sentiment Carter understood in shares. I, I frequently say that I was blessed to have been grown up poor in Rector, Arkansas. And when asked about his legacy, he only has one answer. I was back in Rector recently and they asked me, uh, what do you want, how do you want to be remembered? And I said, as Henry and Faye's kid from Rector.